identity management <coughs> architect in the identity management team. And we kind of oversee everything from internal and external uh, user management, uh, both internal employees and also external customers and consumer accounts. Uh, anything to do with user identity, our team manages it. And uh, I have my colleagues with me and my boss with me as well over here. And she overlooks pretty much everything that is identity management related. Um, so what is Seagate? Uh, what do we do? We, we are a technology company. We make and sell storage and services. We make and sell a lot of storage, a lot of storage. And, uh, and we are adding some services to our portfolio as well. But our core business has been uh, selling uh, storage devices, both for enterprise and cons uh, consumer use. You probably have used a Seagate drive. If not, uh, uh, the company that you work for might be using Seagate storage in some manner. Uh, <clears throat> so what we needed, we needed a, uh, so, okay, so we have a lot of customers. Uh, we have lots of them, and we want to connect with them. They are our bestest friends. If you buy a Seagate drive, you are our best friend. Um, and <clears throat> so that's all about, uh, it's all about customer experience. We want to have deeper post-sales engagement after. So buying is one thing, but once you buy the drive, and you, we want to give you uh, the best experience possible from uh, end to end, from buying, registering, getting services on that, uh, getting uh, warranty returns, whatever, and uh, getting new drives uh, in future our new storage devices from Seagate in future. So we want to understand the customer. We, have a, we want to have a deeper understanding of the customer and provide the, the whole engagement as a single unified user experience for the our customer experience. Uh, we, we heard uh, Andy Bird talk about uh, customer experience management. So we want to do that end to end. And to build that experience out, uh, first of all, what we needed was a way for our customers to talk to us. So uh, there's, what we started off with building was a customer portal, consumer portal, that's what we call it. And it's essentially where our customers can come and uh, access the services that we provide uh, and also uh, essentially interact with Seagate as a company. We needed, <coughs> for that, uh, we needed to manage customer uh, the identities that are uh, the customer identities, and once we have uh, once we so you have a website that has any type of login, you need to manage their accounts and identities, and we need to provide that as a single unified experience with a uh, single sign-on. I'm going to use the word single sign-on, but it is it is it's part of the user experience because you you want to if you have multiple services. On your uh, web presence, then you want to provide them a single user interface for them to sign into those services, and uh, so that they feel uh, not only it's easier for them, they feel secure uh, w when they are making transactions with you. So we built a customer portal service using an enterprise-grade identity management and API management platform, hint WSO2, since you're at the WSO2 conference. So. Uh, so we wanted to centralize the identity. Uh, I'm going to go into a quick demo of what we did. Uh, so when I say we, it's usually a few other people. Actually, a lot of other people at Seagate doing that stuff. Um, so if you go to the Seagate website, that's a nice, fancy website, which has this interactive logo. If you haven't checked this out, do, uh, do that. And it's actually pulling in uh, image feeds, live image feed from uh, Getty, Getty Images. So it's, you can actually play with this logo. It's interactive uh, using JavaScript. But uh, so that, that wasn't the highlight of the presentation. We are here to talk, <laughs> we're here to talk about WSO2, not the logo. Um, so now we, uh, if, so if you go to the Seagate website, the first thing you see is this small guy over here. What is this guy? This guy is actually the consumer, uh, the entryway for our consumer and customers to log in into our services, uh, request services, and talk to us, uh, interact with us. And if you go click over here, if you click on this guy and say consumer 
it, it takes you to this uh, login page and this login page is essentially an entry point and th there's several entry points to this uh, uh, essentially the login page uh, for the consumer portal. The, so this is the Seagate consumer portal and so if you come to this point this is actually it's actually a page served by the WSO2 identity server you can actually see the URL says the uh, IS which stands for identity server.ca.com and this is where the user logs in. So this is a unified experience. It's a Seagate branded unified experience powered by WSO2 IS uh, identity server where the user can log in and consume our services. Um, <coughs> we actually kind of host uh, multiple, uh, so Seagate has, uh, uh, I guess, uh, daughter companies and we host their uh, portals on the same uh, identity server as well. So if, uh, if, uh, if, we, if we were to go to a Lassie branded, uh, which is also a Seagate company, and you will see that uh, it's actually the same IS server, but a different uh, user experience for the, uh, or, or different UI. No, uh, same user experience, but a different UI. And uh, you can log in over there and consume the services. But in this case, I'm going to actually just go ahead and click here, login and sign in. So this is actually, uh, at this point, it's communicating with the IS server. The IS server, I, I'll go into the more details, it's actually sending back a SAML token, which is consumed by uh, the application. And uh, at this point, you can see all the, surface, uh, all the services that are surfaced uh, within the consumer portal. And <clears throat> these, to surface these services, we are actually using, um, or, or actually, uh, if I click over here, so if, if I'm a new user, I'm going to go ahead and click on the product registration if I want to uh, register a, Seagate, a fine Seagate drive that I've purchased recently. And uh, I can go ahead and do that. And all this is powered by, um, it's, uh, so we have internal APIs, and those internal APIs, we, uh, we, uh, this consumer portal uses those internal APIs, but those internal APIs are front-ended by the WSO2 API manager, and I'll go into the more details of that. Um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's the user experience. I'm going to actually quickly show uh, one more thing before I move on to my presentation. Uh, okay, so that's that was that, and uh, so uh, one thing I, I wanted to highlight was that even though we only have one single IS server, we we have different user experiences based on where the user is coming from. If uh, if they are coming from the C, which is also a Seagate company, they get a different user experience. Uh, user, uh, user interface, sorry, I keep on using the word user experience, but uh, they, they get a branded, so you get, uh, let's see, branded user experience, uh, interface. So do, you, sorry, yeah. so do you maintain all those uh, different UIs in, in your, uh, the login portal? Yeah. So, for, so, you, so you manage all those uh, right. UIs? Right, so the, the UIs are done by us, and uh, it's also, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting that not just the UI has to be branded, but uh, if you go to, for example, uh, seagate.com, the, the URLs also have to be branded. So if, if we take you to the identity server, we can, uh, if you're at, starting from a Seagate property, you cannot say is.seagate.com. It has to be is.lacy.com. Uh, so everything is uh, it's fully uh, the, uh, the user experience is fully customized for the starting point where the user is originating from. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my presentation. And so that was the live demo. And so we covered that. I'm going to go into presentation mode. Okay, so what components did we use from WSO to, to achieve this? Uh, I, I, I mentioned API managers. So this is the key thing. Uh, this is actually the gateway that's talking to our internal REST APIs. Uh, the REST APIs, our internal REST APIs provide all the functionality that the consumer portal provides to the user, but uh, we needed a way for them, uh, for these, uh, to surface these internal APIs externally in a secure fashion, and that can be, uh, uh, that requires authorization using OAuth, 
or throttling and if you want to limit the rate and things like that. So, the, so this, uh, having a, an a API manager sitting in front of, because we could already, we already had the APIs. We could s simply make, uh, expose them on the internet, but that will, that will not be secure. So you want to use a, something like an API manager which has built-in analytics uh, and security using OAuth and all the uh, security buzzwords. And, uh, <coughs> and then we have the identity server. This is what is managing our, our consumer identities. So we have about, uh, I think, close to 1.6 million user accounts. And uh, they're all uh, within this identity server. And I'm going to go into a, a very high-level diagram as well. And we use SAML for single sign-on. I'm sure you attended uh, several of uh, the sessions, earlier sessions, which talked about SAML. And uh, if you were here yesterday, there was a very good session by Prabhat, uh, which covered SAML and uh, other open source standards. So for, for the user repository, we could have either gone with the LDAP repository or, uh, or something um, other uh, than that. So what we ended up with was using a Oracle uh, database that acts as a repository. So that's, uh, that's a very powerful feature of the identity server that it can use a, a database for a user repository. Uh, it's essentially uh, really good. And uh, we managed, uh, uh, we have extended uh, the attributes. So we have a lot of attributes which are surfaced as claims within the uh, identity server. And we also use the WSO2 BAM server. The BAM is uh, the, uh, if you were here yesterday and this morning, uh, there, was a, there was a lot of talk about predictive analysis uh, using the uh, data analytics server DAS, WSO2, which is a newer version. Uh, I shouldn't call it a new version because it's a much, uh, much more feature rich than BAM, but business analytics monitor was the previous version. So we are using that for collecting telemetry data from Seagate uh, devices. So when you purchase a Seagate drive, it is actually, and if you opt in, you can send uh, telemetry data from that device back to, uh, back to home, in this case, Seagate. And uh, uh, we collect all that data in, in the WSO2 BAM, and which can be used for analytics and other things, cool stuff. So this is the high-level uh, architecture. Uh, we have the identity server, the consumer portal, which I showed earlier, is actually, uh, so they, when the user logs in, it's, uh, if they're not, uh, or when the, the user tries to log in, if they're redirected to the identity server, the identity server sends back a SAML token and they're all logged in and happy and using or consuming our services. Uh, the consumer portal is using the API manager to talk to our internal APIs down there, and all, um, all this is all REST-based, and also the analytics is actually sending, uh, oh, sorry, the API manager is sending the analytics data to the business activity monitor. Similarly, the consumer portal is also sending uh, business activity monitor, and if you can see, these, these are Seagate drives sending data into the uh, business activity monitor as well. Uh, this is an opt-in, so uh, just, just because you have a Seagate drive doesn't doesn't mean it's sending data back to home. Uh, <laughs> so, and we have uh, for, <coughs> for logging and monitoring, we, so, so logging and monitoring is very key. So you have to understand that uh, if, if, if an event happens, if an error happens, you have to understand why it happened. And we are using Splunk for that, and we continuously monitor our portal. Uh, I mean, we monitor it to the very detailed level. And we have to monitor the API functions. Anything that is exposed, we monitor. For, for example, product registration, we have to monitor that. And everything has to be monitored. And we use Splunk uh, as a, for monitoring the logs and analyzing the logs from all these systems. So all, all of these systems are pushing the logs into Splunk at this point. I think uh, at some point in time, uh, if, when we upgrade to WSO2 DAS, since it's, it has uh, search, better search capabilities, we will pr probably start using uh, or pushing the logs into the DAS inst uh, maybe at uh, some point in time. <coughs> so what are the strengths of the WSO2 solution? 
uh, it's open standards. It's open standards and open standards. Okay, so they, um, WSO2 team, and it's, it's actually pretty good. They support all kinds of open standards from SAML, OpenID, FIDO. So if you, if you don't know FIDO, it's, it's really cool. It's actually bring your own authentication, strong authentic, authentication, not just uh, bring, your, um, bring your own strong authentication to the identity provider. In this case, it would be Seagate. So if you have, uh, if you have customers, if they have FIDO tokens, they can bring that as a strong authentication token to, their, uh, to Seagate to secure their account. So we don't have to provide them anything. They, they can use their own uh, favorite form of strong authentication for logging into the Seagate account. All the good stuff, 100% open source. Um, so when WSO2 starts integrating new services, they make sure that they're fully implementing the open standards. They, uh, or they, um, they, they claim to support. So uh, slide uh, strands 1.a, open standards, open standards. WSO2 is very open to ideas. If you, if you talk to them, you can actually get that feeling that uh, they're open to ideas. But as uh, Sanjay said this morning, that they don't think customer is always right. So, so they'll challenge your ideas too, which is a good thing, because otherwise you'll have a mess. Um, the other thing, the, the strength that we found uh, while working with the WSO2 team, and we have a support contract with them. All the support uh, personnel are not just well versed with the product they're supporting, so you can actually get that feeling when you open a JIRA ticket, uh, if you have questions. They, uh, they're actually very engaged in the product as well. So not they are just trained support pro uh, personnel, but they actually are required to uh, contribute to the code base. This is a huge differentiator. So if you, if you have a support person who has actually contributed to the code uh, code base, that he has a good, very good, under, deep, deep understanding of the issue that you're facing or how to solve that issue. Or at least, uh, if not solve it, uh, he can explain you in a very good way of why what you're doing may not be the right way to do it. Uh, they are committed to 100% user uh, customer success. In a, and this is something uh, Sanjay mentioned as well. Uh, so surfacing our internal APIs. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, you gotta have, uh, you can always use your APIs and put them on the internet, but those are not gonna be secure. So what you wanna do is have a secure way uh, of surfacing those APIs. In this case, uh, uh, if you were in the earlier talk with Prabhat, he mentioned all about API security and how to use OAuth for that. And if you were not there, uh, check out uh, the video that uh, Prabhat, uh, or the video of the session that Prabhat did. So it was a really good session. And so you, you wanna secure your APIs and you wanna throttle them. And API manager is the way to go. And <clears throat> Is setting up the API manager or surfacing your APIs using the API manager is actually really uh, easy. Um, <clears throat> and it actually supports both, uh, all kinds of multi-factor biometric spin or SMS. And so that's all coming in uh, WSO2 IS 5.2.2, uh, which I heard is gonna be anytime in the next two weeks. Uh, so surfacing APIs, I, I mentioned, uh, if you wanna do anything APIs, make sure that you have a good API manager that's uh, front-ending those APIs so that they're secure and throttled. Um, some of the challenges uh, that we faced was uh, WSO didn't provide a out-of-box out user migration. This, uh, they, there was a bulk user migration patch, but it has very limited functionality. I'm not sure why uh, WSO2 ha hasn't addressed this, but this is, this is a real, I mean, this is a real enterprise use case. Because when you are dealing with hundreds of thousands of users, you buy companies, you get use, their users as well. You get that. WSO2 has to provide a good way of ma uh, moving those over into the identity management system. So what we ended up doing was actually, uh, this, the solution was actually provided by WSO2 was uh, use a DB to DB transfer rather than using their WSO2 APIs to migrate the users. So which was, 
it worked. It worked out really nicely. It was fast, but it, w it wasn't the optimal way because you want to use everything. Anything you, know you want to do, you want to use the APIs. APIs are king. Um, um, the other thing that we have encountered in the WSO2 identity server space that most of the APIs are SOAP APIs. Uh, SOAP APIs work. Uh, they're, they're OK. But they're more difficult to work with compared to REST. I hope uh, that the next release of uh, WSO2 IS server and their other servers uh, start supporting REST APIs. And I heard there are some uh, roadmap uh, plans for that. Uh, no bulk API support. So this is uh, when you need bulk operations. I think this is uh, something that we have opened a request with uh, WSO2. And because uh, sometimes you just need to make bulk operations on your entire user base and things like that. And that's, this would be a good feature to have. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we, when we implemented BAM, was that our business partners were looking for an easy way to uh, browse and search through the data that's being pulled into BAM. Um, the current version of BAM, uh, which is 2.5.5, doesn't have any of this capability. And so it was, I mean, the search was pretty non-existing. But the good thing is, which I'm going to go into the next, uh, what's next, is the data analytics server which Sanjay covered this morning and, and uh, there was a really good session yesterday, is, uh, addresses that. And so it provides better interactive analysis, better batch analysis, analytics. And uh, best, of, best thing is that you can search. Uh, all the data is uh, uh, indexed. So you can perform full text search using Apache Lucene. If you're familiar with Lucene, you, you'll know that it's a very powerful query syntax. And so anything that you can, uh, you can pretty much search for anything with, uh, that's uh, stored in the data and analytics serv uh, server, which is, again, the next uh, evolution, which is the evolution of the BAM, WSO2 BAM. And uh, so, OK, so that, that was what's next. Authentication for, uh, so what we want to do next is we want to use uh, um, single sign-on for mobile and other installed apps. And the way that we're thinking of doing is uh, uh, SAML plus OAuth, essentially drop a OAuth token on the device. Uh, that's, uh, so it's essentially tying the web experience and the device experience together. This will come in handy when, you, uh, when you're dealing with installed apps on mobile devices or on desktop and things like that. And this is something that Seagit is looking to do in the near future, very near future. <coughs> um, Multi-factor authentication. So that's another uh, of our business use case as we go into more providing more services uh, with our, uh, cons within our consumer portal. We want to have a stronger way, or, or at least provide the option for the user to feel secure about their account. And we want to provide uh, an option for them to use the multi-factor authentication using SMS, FIDO. Uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, well, uh, that, that's built into the next release of the identity server. There's another option which I don't remember at this point. Uh, and I think uh, I made it in 25 minutes. Thank you.